Hello guys, let's talk about free fall. So we live in planet Earth and we are all affected by the gravitational force of attraction. So everything seems to go down, accelerate towards the center of the planet. And this is also observable in, in Moon, in Jupiter, everything falls towards the center of the planet. And these planets have different uh, gravitational force of attraction. The bigger the planet is, the higher the force of gravity of that planet. So let's say this is the sun. The sun has a tremendous amount of gravitational force of attraction. And so planet Earth, let's say this is planet Earth, it, it wants to go in a straight path, but it cannot because of the gravitational force of attraction of the sun. So it is attracted towards the center of the sun and it's, it has its own direction. So in effect, it cannot escape that gravitational pull. So the planet is just circling around the sun. And our planet also has gravitational force of attraction. So everything moves towards the center of the sun. Even the moon, so let's say this is the moon, it revolves around the earth. So that's the force of gravity. And that force of gravity causes everything to accelerate downward. And acceleration is what we call the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, everything, everything, even paper is, is attracted towards the center of the earth. Everything accelerates downward. And the rate again is what? 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay? So everything in our planet is attracted towards the center of our planet. Like whether you are in the North Pole, South Pole, whenever you are in the planet, all of us tend to go to the center of the planet. The ball will bounce back and then will, in any location of the planet, whether you are in, in the mountains, still in the planet, okay? You, all of us will accelerate. And that acceleration is actually determined and what is that? I hope every one of you knows this already. And that is the G, the acceleration due to gravity with a value of 8.9.8 know, meter per second squared. And it's fairly constant anywhere you are in the planet. The acceleration due to gravity seems to be, doesn't change much. If your Mount Everest, perhaps, I don't know, 9.7, 9.6, it's just a small amount still close to 9.8 right so that's the acceleration due to gravity now if you get to use this value in an equation you have to use a and that is negative g because g is just a magnitude we don't include the negative sign well we know that it's going down on but we don't include the sign g is just a magnitude no direction but if you get to use an equation you have to put the negative sign because it's going downward it's always going downward so yeah you can put negative g okay so now let's have a demonstration so you have here a ball uh, a paper and uh, perhaps a marker so let's do some experiment first question which one will fall faster, a ball or a paper? Another question, which one will fall faster, a ball or a marker? And how about both paper? Are they going to fall at the same rate? Let's do this. So write down your answer. Which one will fall faster, a ball or a paper? Paper, let me move this downward. And uh, What's your answer? Of course, we'll tell you that the ball fall faster. What do you think is something? Is it the mass? Is it the surface? Okay, so in this, for this question, the ball fall faster. Second one, which one will fall faster, the ball or the marker? So I will release them. You cannot see it in my screen, but I will release them, them at the same time. Okay, perhaps I'll stand here. So which one fall faster? 
So it's the, the marker. Okay, how about now, which one will fall faster? The paper or the paper? As in matter, seem to be the same. But why do you think so? How about this? The paper or the paper? Again. Okay, so now you see the paper uh, falls faster. The other one, I mean. The main difference is not the weight, not the mass, not the surface. Well, there is something that hinders this from falling at 9.8 meter per second. So it should go faster and faster, but this one is, is slowing down. Like it's gaining a constant velocity. It's not accelerating. This one is accelerating fast. Okay, but this one has almost zero resistance, air resistance. And this one has a lot of air resistance. Okay, so let's... Uh, um, do that. Let's change a screen. Okay, so did you take note of your answer? So if there is in planet Earth, okay, let me write another color. Okay, so this is planet Earth. And let's say in moon. Okay. In moon, there's no air resistance. There's no atmosphere. Okay, or we can say in vacuum. In space, outer space. It should be the same, okay? Okay, the ball or the paper? In earth, it's the ball. But in space or in moon, doesn't matter. They will fall at the same time. If you remember the experiment done by an astronaut when they landed in the moon, they had a feather, very light, and a hammer, very heavy. But they fall at the same rate because there's no air resistance. And they are accelerating with acceleration due to gravity of the, the moon, which is about, I think, 1.6 meter per second squared. So it's about, uh, I don't know, uh, five times slower. So can you imagine if you're in the moon, you can jump five times higher or you can fall without injury five times higher, okay? Because of the lower gravitational force of attraction in moon and the lower G, okay? In earth, ball or marker? So it's the marker, right? Because marker seems to, as compared to the ball, you have more air resistance. It will, uh, you know, it will become slower because of the air resistance or friction. But here, the marker is a little bit ballistic so it tends to resist air resistance, it will fall faster. Okay, but it doesn't matter in space or in moon, the same. Here, depends. So whether the, the, the one with this orientation will fall faster than the one with the higher surface area because it has more air resistance. This one is a little bit, just a little bit. Later on, it wobbles a little bit because of air, but uh, if it's stable, it will fall faster. And again, in space or in vacuum, it doesn't matter. So really nice, amazing, amazing phenomena, right? So again, if you have a vacuum, so let's say this is your vacuum, it doesn't matter, so it's sealed. When I say sealed, there's no air, there's no no particle almost no particle it's basically space there's nothing so in vacuum whether you have a ball or a paper they will fall at the same time because no air resistance okay so now let's discuss we're not going to derive anymore let's discuss the kinematics equation for free fall okay so the kinematics equation for free fall is actually the same as the kinematics equation along the x-axis.
So let me copy it here. So remember this. Let me write it. So this is for your x-axis. Okay? So this is for your x-axis, so one dimension. How about for y-axis or free fall? So what you're going to do is just change the variable x to y. And the acceleration due to gravity is given always in free fall problems. So equation number one for free fall is v final equals initial velocity plus acceleration, which is acceleration due to gravity, that is negative g or negative 9.8 meter per second. So the beauty of free fall is that acceleration is always given negative g or negative 9.8 meter per second squared. So it's always given, so it's easier to solve free fall problems, right? What will happen to equation number two? You can say it now. X will become y because we are now along the, the y-axis. The y-axis, positive y, this is negative y. This one is x-axis, negative x, positive x. So we'll just change the axis. This is y. And then equation number two will become y equals one half v naught plus v times t. Easy, right? Well, you can memorize one set and then you know already for the equation set for free fall. Equation number three, v squared equals v naught squared plus two a y. Instead of x, use y. Equation number four will become y equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. So it's the same set of equation. Okay? So nothing new actually. If you understood, then it will be easier for you to, to memorize. Okay, so these are the equation of kinematics for free fall. Okay, now how do you use this when solving problems? Yeah, you, you, it's the same, same uh, procedure. You visualize, draw and visualize a problem. Choose the coordinate, we usually start at x or y equal to 0, downward, so going to the negative y. And then t naught is 0, write down the given and the required variables, choose the correct equation, and then solve. So take note for free fall, it's always along the y-axis. So when you're solving problems in free fall, you have your y-axis, like this. Okay? So... Sometimes if you toss a coin, if it's going up, it's positive y, okay? If it's going up, it's positive y. If it's going down, so let's say the ball or an object fell down, then it's going negative y. And the acceleration is always negative g or negative 9.8 meter per second squared. So let's say a ball is being thrown from the top of a building so of course you, you just let it fall the ball and then um, of course the time is uh, t naught is zero so it doesn't matter anymore we don't need to write the t naught because we start at time zero so we just erase that here is the beauty of free fall initial velocity is usually equal to zero meter per second meter per second right okay so if you're solving problem you can use it and then sometimes it goes down from a height of what? That height is equal to your negative y. Why negative? Because it's going down. We can say y is equal to negative h. Okay? And then usually there's the final velocity can be given or can be the required. But the acceleration is always given. Again, it's negative 9.8 meter per second squared or negative g. Okay, what if you toss a coin? So let's say this is your thumb, and apologize for my drawing. You toss a coin, and this is your coin. It goes up, so it's positive y. But if the coin goes down, it's negative y. It goes up, and it goes down. But the acceleration due to gravity is the same, negative 9.8 meter per second squared. It's always downward. Okay? So 
Um, that's all for the free fall and one dimension kinematics uh, equation. Perhaps next time I will, uh, I will make a video on the graphical analysis of motion. If you have questions or suggestions, kindly write it down in the comment. And yeah, you can put, you can click the like button and notification so that you'll be notified when I will publish that uh, tutorial on graphical analysis. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Enjoy learning, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Cheers.